Retro Review is right here with another Top 10 list. This is the Top 10 Expansion Packs in Gaming. Main rule this time is that DLCs also count. Ready for number 10? Hit it! She hit them with her Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare while I'm loath to put a zombie apocalypse game on any list, unless it's Left 4 Dead of course, I will admit that Undead Nightmare for Red Dead Redemption was pretty hilarious, especially John's reactions to seeing loads of zombies. I would count this as a parody of all other zombie games, just highlighting how ridiculous the whole setting is, and with hardly any of the characters taking it seriously. Also, Red Dead seems to be the last game you'd think of seeing a zombie setting added to. Well, now that I think about it, something like Animal Crossing would probably feel even weirder. Dragon Age Origins Awakening If you're like me and you loved Origins and wanted to see a sequel that wasn't crap, yes Dragon Age 2, I'm looking at you, then Awakening is right up your alley. Picking up soon after the end of the main game, the story throws you back into Ferelden where the Darkspawn have spawned once again, whilst being dark. It'll be up to you to import your last character, or make a new one, strengthen your party, go forth to complete quests, and make the bad guys cry like an anime fan on Prom Night. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist saying that. Half-Life Opposing Force Though most would see Half-Life 2 as the first game sequel, I'd go so far as to say that Opposing Force is the real sequel, seeing as it's set during and immediately after the events of the first game. This set a standard for future gaming expansions, as it quite literally expanded the original game, introducing more stuff from all categories, as well as expanding on the story itself. It's also quite cool to see things happen in this game, knowing that it was you who caused it during your playthrough of the main game. Lane Goodman. Mass Effect 2, Lair of the Shadow Broker. Considering that this is essentially a small distraction from the main game, I was actually really impressed with this entry. If you remember back to one of my very first videos, I said that I didn't think much of Liara as a character, and for the most part, that still stands. However, I will say that she had a pretty good character shift slash development phase during this DLC. Having had enough with all of the Shadow Broker's shit, Liara is out to stop him for good, and Shepard can't say no to Poon, so he's, slash she's, whatever gender you went with, is along for the ride too. And there are several rides to be had, such as a car chase, fighting on spaceships, and several pretty decent boss fights too. This title is more focused on expanding the backstory, as well as a couple of the other characters, but it's also worth playing just for the gameplay too. Dishonored Brickmore Witches I have to admit that I really liked Vanilla Dishonored. Granted, its advertisement campaign didn't do any favours, but throw all of that crap out the window and what's left is a really... Hmm, how would I describe this game? Environmentally rich experience. This game is character and a lot going on behind the scenes that you're not necessarily seeing. The first DLC, The Knife of Dunwall, I'll be honest, I didn't like it. I felt that there wasn't much going on for it and I just didn't really get along with it either. It's because of this that I was really happy to play Brigmore Witches, which not only brought the game back into form, but it also felt like the developers were able to bring everything together to make some really fantastic levels. The combat and stealth were at their best, and the story was pretty good too, seeing another chapter played out from a different character. Just an impressive expansion pack all round. Fallout New Vegas Old Blue World Despite what a lot of people initially thought during my oh-so-controversial New Vegas video a few years ago, I actually really liked Vegas' expansions. And if I had to pick a favourite, then Old Blue World it is. The plot is overly stupid in a self-aware kind of way, and I've always enjoyed those settings. Also, the amount of extra stuff to get in this DLC is great too, with the stealth suit being one of the best combat suits in any video game. You can also mechanically augment yourself out in Jansen style to improve your stats and abilities, and the map is pretty big too. And Robot Scorpions. Lots of Robot Scorpions. Shogun 2 Total War Fall of the Samurai. One of my favourite standalone expansions, but this game just hit the nail on the head for me. 
Whilst I really did like regular Shogun 2, I did feel that there was room for improvement, especially on the new food mechanic. And Fall of the Samurai managed to correct all of that and introduce a whole load of other stuff that just made it awesome. The battles were more intense with the advent of firearms, and the introduction of rail networks could mean that huge armies were appearing from out of nowhere, just when you felt that you were safe. I also really liked the clash between the Imperial Throne and the Shogunate. I guess I just find that period of Japanese history really interesting, but even when putting that aside, this expansion pack was still excellent. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon F***ing play this shit right now. No, I mean now. I'm just gonna sit here and wait for you to play it before continuing. Have they gone? <laughs> Joke's on then, I'm gonna continue anyway. If you love stupid and cheesy 80s movies, especially ones that star Jean-Claude Van Damme, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, etc, etc, then you're gonna love this game. Imagine the apocalyptic future that Terminator 2 sets, but with loads more lasers, both sides kicking the shit out of each other, and dinosaurs running about the place. This is an 80s style sci-fi action film in video game form, so why haven't you played it yet? The Elder Scrolls IV The Shivering Isles Though some would argue that this expansion wasn't any good, I'd beg to disagree. Considering the amount of new content that it includes, a huge new map with loads of places to explore, loads more quests, unique and rare loot, I mean the place just feels different from Cyrodiil. It has its own character, and in some respects, it does feel like a completely different game. Adding and expanding tons on what is already there, giving you a totally new experience to enjoy and explore, rather than just tweaking the existing experience. It's been one week since you looked at me. Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea. Seriously, just wow. I mean, how do you follow up the smash hit that is Bioshock Infinite with something else that's also fit to fuck with your head? I really didn't think that the DLC episodes for Infinite were going to be able to hold a torch anywhere near the main game, but boy was I wrong. I don't want to spoil what happens, but all I'll say is, make sure you've played the first Bioshock game before playing this, because there's things about that game that you'll need to know before playing this. Bioshock Infinite set a very high standard for any future games in the series, but I honestly felt that the Burial at Sea episodes did that series justice too, and should be played by anyone who enjoys thought-provoking story-driven games. And we're out of time again, but if you... Mm, I didn't really set myself up for a send-off line. Like and subscribe and whatever. See ya!